the lessons, uh, the efforts, the initiatives uh, that we hope will arise from this summit are those designed to bring together coalitions to help solve the problem. When the leader of the free world brings that world to his doorstep, it is always seen as a moment of decision, a time when there is a threat to everyone and a call for people to band together and fight a common enemy. However, in this case, one must wonder if anyone truly understands the enemy and if President Barack Obama is once again just wasting our time and maybe even the lives of innocents. Let's welcome to Midpoint, Republican political strategist, multiple author, former member of Vice President Dick Cheney's staff, and the current CEO of Christie Strategies, Ron Christie's in the house today. Ron, good to talk to you again. And always a pleasure to be at Midpoint. Ron, here we go. The president is deciding to fight violent extremism with a brand new summit in Washington, D.C., bringing everybody together. I hate to say this out loud about our president, but I'm sure other people are saying it as well. Does the man have a clue what he's talking about in the first place? No, he doesn't, Ed. And that really, really worries me about the danger that we face, not only as Americans, but those of us who live in the civilized world. The caliphate that ISIS seeks to really impose, not only in certain areas in the Middle East, if they had their way, they would impose this in the world. That is Sharia law, a strict adherence to the Islamic faith. And the President of the United States and those in his administration refer to ISIL, uh, another term that is used to uh, refer to this terrorist organization. But we're dealing with ISIS. And if you can't name properly the group that seeks to send us back to the fifth century, if you can't identify the threat, then I think that you really can't put forward a meaningful solution as to how to get us past this. Look at this summit, and you have, you have dozens of leaders from around the world who are coming, but yet they say they're talking about violent extremism, and they won't name Islamic extremism what it is. All right, now let me talk about that, Ron, because I'm sure you've heard this as well, the pushback from the White House and the various spokespeople who say the reason why the president and we don't do that is we don't want to give credibility to these people. We don't want to push forward what they believe their agenda is, so we are thus making the right call by not talking about Islamic extremists, or Christians, if you will, who are being beheaded? Well, the last I can check, Ed, is I think we can go all the way back to the late 1970s when our embassy was seized in Tehran and Iran, uh, when Islamic extremists were at war with us. You can fast forward any number of years looking to the USS Cole. You can look at uh, the explosion in Lebanon that killed 341 of our Marines during the Reagan administration. You could keep going forward to the embassy bombings that took place around the world, all in the hands of Islamic terrorism. So this notion uh, that the number two uh, uh, spokesperson at the State Department, Marie Harf, said yesterday that, you know, if we just find a way to work with our partners, that these folks won't go on a path of terrorism is ludicrous. These folks have been at this for over a thousand years, and unless you call and confront evil by what it is, not the religion, but those who wage war in the name of Islam, You've got a problem that this president just can't fix. All right. Now, what about that spokesperson? You just talked about some of the comments that she made, uh, Marie Harf, who now she is double and triple downing on her statements, basically saying that her comments were too nuanced, perhaps. And she's even indicating that maybe the critics were just not smart enough to get her jobs to comment or, or, or jobs to combat ISIS comment. What do you think? Well, when you look back to Jonathan Gruber, who said that the American people uh, were too stupid as it related to the rollout of Obamacare, uh, Marie Harp and her nuanced, uh, she said, you know, it's, it's too nuanced for people to understand in a soundbite, is absolutely ludicrous. No, we all understand in a soundbite, Marie, that if you can't call Islamic Jihad what it is in five to ten seconds, it doesn't matter how long you try to walk around the issue. When you have the Pope, when you have the Danish Prime Minister, when you have the head of France, when you have leaders around the world who recognize this threat for what it is, and our own president and our American uh, government can't even honestly acknowledge to the American people the dangers we face. We've got a real problem, and we need adult supervision, not a faculty lounge discourse. Is that part of the issue here, Ron, that when you have people like Marie Harf, these are just basically academics who are trying to get a chance maybe to get their 15 seconds of fame? I think so. I, I question certainly the qualifications of many in the Obama uh, administration in general, but I look at Marie Harf in particular of, you represent the State Department, you represent the United States government, you represent thousands of people who work around the world to advance the interests of the United States, and if you can't articulate evil for what it is, and you try to be too cute by half, but yet and still, 24 hours later, we're still talking about her, no, what we need to be talking about is how we're going to confront this threat 
how we're going to form a real coalition to address this threat. And yes, Marie Harf, we need to kill every last one of those terrorists. When she said we can't kill our way through this, until they stop killing us, we need to kill them. All right, Ron Christie, stand by. We're going to come back on the other side, continue the conversation right here on Midpoint, where we question everyone and everything. All right, let's talk some presidential politics now. Welcome back to Midpoint once again. Current CEO of Christie Strategies, Ron Christie. Ron, let's talk about Scott Walker and Jeb Bush here for a moment, because Scott Walker is getting a tremendous amount of attention these days. He didn't graduate college, didn't finish college, as Howard Dean would like to remind everybody, and maybe he is unintelligent. Do you get the sense that Scott Walker is getting even more push out of this? He is becoming more a hero to the conservatives right now, uh, simply because the liberals are trying to make fun of him, and they're just not doing a good job. Well, Ed, I think you're exactly right. I, I look at my grandfather, who never even graduated from high school. It was one of the smartest people that I ever had the honor and privilege to know. Why? Because he had real, practical, world experience, both here in America and serving his country abroad. And I think when you look at Scott Walker, someone who actually attended college but had to drop out to get a job to make a living, and you look at his ability uh, to have three elections within a handful of years, uh, of course, the two recall attempts and then his, his subsequent uh, election, the man has governed. The man has balanced his budget. The man has done what he said what he would do in Wisconsin. And I think it has really rallied many of the conservatives around the country who look at this as New England's Northeast elitism um, on behalf of Dr. Dean, as opposed to someone who made it through the school of hard knocks, maybe didn't graduate from college, but boy, he actually governed in a way that he said he would, which has saved his citizens millions of dollars. Okay, let's Get your comments now from a strategy standpoint here. Comments been made. Howard Dean has been rightly ridiculed in this. It was a foolish thing to say out loud. Foolish thing to even consider, as a matter of fact, with so many people who did not go to college, who are very successful in life. But now with Scott Walker, people are starting to answer back to it. Should they just kind of pull back and let this die for, uh, and just really let this go away? Because let's face it, we're a long way away from the actual election, from an actual run here. So is this something that Republicans could use to their advantage against the public push that elitism? I think it's something that Republicans could use to their advantage, Ed, but I tell you, I think you're absolutely right. Scott Walker is not the presumptive favorite right now. He's given a great speech in Iowa by many accounts. Uh, he's gaining a, a lot more traction of, of the sort of talking heads which you and I might be guilty of. But he still has yet to make his case, not only to the American people, but to the early folks in Iowa for the caucus, New Hampshire for the primary, and South Carolina that really propel uh, candidates uh, towards that elusive goal of becoming the next president of the United States. So I think it would behoove the Walker campaign to sort of walk back from this, uh, they already made their point. This is something that they, are, of course, have already prepared for any, any future attacks. But for them, I think the job at hand is raising money, uh, raising support, and raising his profile rather than talking about the things that are negative about the governor. I think they need to focus on what's positive. All right, let's turn to somebody else and a former governor. Jeb Bush will speak to the Chicago Council on Global Affairs today. He's going to make some comments. Specifically, though, what they're focusing on is he will charge the Obama administration with an inconsistent and indecisive approach that has caused America to lose its standing around the world. Granted, a lot of people may agree with him. But really, doesn't Jeb Bush have to start focusing on some real issues here now? Because there's also foreign policy. This is somebody else. Jeb Bush doesn't have a lot of experience in foreign policy. So doesn't he need to start pushing what he can do forward instead of taking a slam at others? Well, I think he does. I mean, I think it's, it's easy for Republicans, and it's almost a knee-jerk reflexive uh, impulse to trash the president and say, well, Obama's bad on ISIS, Obama's bad on the deficit. But I think what the American people want to hear, Ed, after one of the most divisive uh, presidencies in, in our history, is what are you for? What's your positive vision for moving the country forward? How are you going to improve the economy and, and bring jobs back in? But yes, looking at foreign affairs, how are you going to promote trade? How are you going to make sure that we can confront ISIS and al-Qaeda and Boko Haram and the other terrorist groups that threaten not only our friends and allies here at home, but also people around the world? And I think Governor Bush, uh, one of the easy things to criticize him for is, you know, that he doesn't have substantive foreign policy experience. He needs to talk about his role as commander of chief in chief of the Florida National Guard. Did he send troops to Iraq? Did he send troops to Afghanistan? What did he learn from his fellow Floridians who were in combat? And how does he view the world in the 21st century? 
laying out that vision, laying out that roadmap, I think will go a long way in giving people more confidence that he has the skills and the talents uh, that are necessary to run the country. i got about 30 seconds left here, Ron, and again, from a strategy standpoint, is it too early to start talking specifics <coughs> knowing that you have a long way to go to get to November 2016? I do, Ed, and I, I'd say very quickly that this is the time that people want to know what your vision is. They want to know what your model, what your roadmap, what your path moving this country forward is all about. The time is certainly there to get into very, very specific policy proposals. We'll get into that earlier next year. But let's talk about really how you would contrast your vision and your leadership with the current administration and why voting for you, be it Jeb Bush or Scott Walker, Marco Rubio, so many others, is the right thing for Americans to do. A lot of time for the specifics, and believe me, We've got a long way to go between now and November of 2016. It's like I always say, give us a little meat. It's always worthwhile, and just stop giving us the same old, same old all the time. We never get that from you. Ron Christie, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. We'll talk again real soon. Always a pleasure, Ed. Take care, my friend. Take care. Pope Francis has done it again. He set a precedent many in the Catholic Church will not be pleased with, and others will say it is well past time. That's coming up next right here on Midpoint.